focus on the connection. Hey, it's Nikki Llewellyn Gregory, and you're on Gut Plus Science, a mentoring platform for people first leaders of all levels. Here, we talk to exceptional leaders who prioritize culture, get fired up about employee engagement, and are excited to share ideas and tools for bettering employee experience to help others. Thank you for joining us to invest in being a better leader. Now, let's get to it. Hey, it's Nikki, and I've got Kendra Maples with me today, who is a friend of many in the People Forward Network, and we have a lot in common, she and I. And so this conversation should be a lot of fun. Let's get to it. Kendra, I am so excited to spend time with you today on a topic that you are passionate about, but I so much share this passion with you. Focus on the connection. That's what we're here to talk about today. First of all, welcome to the show. Of all topics, you chose connection as the key that drives engagement impact. Share more about why you chose this topic, why this is so important to you. So I I went through a couple of things that I think are big when it comes to the engagement space, like communication, consistency, dedication, trust, all of these. And then I really thought, you know what, they all fall under the connection piece. And for me, it actually goes back to my background. So my background back in the day, right now I work with people, but in the past I worked with animals and they're all, they're all the same people and animals. It's all the same thing. It's all positive reinforcement <laughs> and working with them. But I thought back to, you know, my background and where it all started with working with animals and you can't always verbally communicate. A lot of it is just through behaviors, but all of these things fall with connection. If you don't Mm -hmm. take the time to truly form a deep connection, whether it's an animal or a person, then the other stuff is not, it's not going to fall into place. If you can't be authentic Mm -hmm. with building those connections first. And, you know, I think that sometimes people think of connection in different ways. It's like connection to someone is we met once. Connection to someone else is like, I have 10 of those in my life. You know what I mean? And it's like, what is that? How would you define connection? What does it mean to you? I love that you said that because I've had a lot of people that we meet one time and they're like, oh, I feel so connected, which is true and can be true. But how do you continue to keep that, right? Because if you never talk to that person again, then that connection just kind of fizzled and fades away, right? So I look at connection from more of the standpoint of it's one of the fundamental pieces of culture. I'm a huge proponent of building company culture. And so connection to me is not just the initial piece, right? Maybe that initial introduction was very authentic and very real, But then the continuation of what happens after that, and I feel like really understanding that we're all people. One of my favorite quotes is a Dalai Lama quote that is, we're all human beings, not human doings. And so I feel like that connects with all of this, right? You have to truly understand that you're human, I'm human. How do we form that connection and how do we build on it and make it real? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, as you're talking about this, as I said, you know, I very much share this passion. I love to live this out. And it started to make me think like I'm trying to like break this down myself. And I started to think about there's connection and it intersects with, but there's also relationship. Oh, yes. And so when I'm thinking about like sharpening yourself or or helping yourself to be a good connector, but also like building connection, right? I feel like those are two different things. Like being a connector having connection ability with someone. And then the stream of like all the dots that come together is like what I would call a relationship. Speak to that for a minute. Like how that hits you. Like you said, it's the building blocks almost, right? It's going from the foundation and then building the pieces to get to that relationship piece. And it actually makes me think, so the other day I was watching a presentation from one of the folks from Ben's Bell. I don't know if you're aware of that company, that organization. They're fantastic, but they focus around kindness. 
And she talked about with our group, the difference between being kind and being nice. And being nice is much more of like, you can be a jerk, but act nice. Being kind is more of that. It's deeper. It's intentional, right? So I feel like that with connection and relationship, it's those building blocks, right? To truly build because it starts as the connection and then you have the opportunity to really form strong relationships. So this episode could be for anyone. Anyone could listen to this episode and get something from it. It's right. Like building connection with other people or animals or whatever. (laughs) So our audience is mostly leaders. And so I want to speak into that for a minute. What does a leader who is great at connection, connecting with others look like? Give us a story or example of that just to bring it to life. So a couple of things that I would say as far as what that leader looks like first. That leader is extremely supportive, right? That's one of those leaders that's going to jump in and get their hands dirty to show that connection to their team. One of my absolute best mentors I've ever had was a gentleman when I worked at the San Diego Zoo. And that was a really cool time for me anyway, because that was when I was making that transition from animals to people. And one of my mentors was a gentleman who was very high up in his role in operations, Tim Roop. And he taught me, it didn't matter what your title was. He was in meetings with big wigs all day long, but then he was setting up chairs with my staff and I for events. So he was very supportive and willing to get his hands dirty. But again, to our topic of connection, He made a connection with myself. He made it intentional to make a connection with my team. He didn't care that anybody was at the, at any bottom level. It didn't matter. He was extremely supportive of his team. So I think supportive is huge for what it looks like for a leader that connects with, I think they have to be human centered. So again, Tim, this mentor that I had, he knew that, yeah, we were a world famous zoo, but who runs the world famous zoo? The people do. Yeah, everyone goes to see the tigers and the monkeys and stuff like that. But if you don't have staff running it, nobody can come in and see those animals and then contribute to all of the conservation efforts. So he was very human centered. He knew that at the end of the day, it was the people that were making things happen and making a difference. So I think that is another very strong quality of a leader that focuses on connection. And then they have to be intentional. It's not something that just happens maybe after a while when you work at it, then maybe it's, it just naturally comes to you. But again, with him, he was very intentional about the time that he carved out for everyone at every different level. And the staff knew it. They felt that they were important when he made it a point to come out and be setting up for events or whatever it was. He was extremely intentional with what he did and the way he supported the team. So supportive, human-centered, and intentional. So good. And how do you advise, if we like break this down, how do you advise people to start being intentional about connecting with others? Starting anywhere. I think that as long as they have that in their mindset that, okay, this is an area I want to work on. As long as you're already thinking that the next step is just trying it. It's almost like I would think of it as like fitness or investing, you know, you want to do it, but you just have to take the step and talk to somebody who can help you learn about investing or not only get the gym membership, but go to the gym. So it can start the moment they have that idea of, okay, this is an area I really want to focus on. Then it's just a matter of just doing it. And then from there to deepen. So, you know, hey, I built this connection. I feel like, you know, we hit it off. It might sound like that. Like, I feel like we've got some trust. How do you then take it from that to then deepening the connection? What are those actions? Yep. So one of those areas I would say is constant conversation, 
constant connections, constant interactions, that will naturally deepen the connection. Again, when I worked at San Diego, I, I was making this transition from working with animals and working with people. But even when I was working on the operations team, I still had one macaw that I worked with because I was one of the lead trainers with him. But I was the one who carved out the most time. So at the end of the day, when other trainers were like, well, he doesn't do that for me. Um, you know, an example is I could put him up in a tree knowing full well that he could fly away at any moment he wanted to. I would put him up in the tree, but it was like a little kid. I'd give him 15, you have 15 minutes, go play. And then I gave him the time and then I could call him back down and other trainers were that like, is so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. And other trainers were like, I cannot do this with him, nor do I have the trust that like, He's not going to fly away, but I knew that I could because of the constant time that I put in. It could have been just sitting with him in an office while I was on a computer. It could have been scratching him, taking him out for a presentation at the zoo, but it was constant repetition of time and investment, right? So if you're a leader, obviously you're not going to be scratching them, <laughs> but it's, it's constant, right? So it's virtual calls, set up lunches. If you're virtual, find other virtual ways to connect with them. But again, it's constant. Whatever it is, you're doing it over and over. And you know, the word, it, when we were first starting out and we were talking about like connection, connector, relationships, all of that. And I was just trying to like do my own dissecting of that a little bit. Here's something that keeps coming to me. And then when you were talking about the macaw and the tree, the word is meaning. You are providing oh, yeah. meaning in his life to a place that like, I'm not going to leave this. I don't want to fly away. You know, I, I love being with her or whatever. And I think so much if we think about intentionally connecting with people, it's that series of meaningful deposits. Yeah. And I think that connects to what the gal from Ben's Bells was telling us, right? That difference between kind and nice. You can be nice, but the meaningful piece is when you, the kind piece, right? So making sure those connections aren't just another block on your calendar, right? Oh, I have to yes. call this person. Check the box. Exactly. I'm not just checking the box. Oh, I have to call Kendra and see how she's doing because <laughs> she told me to work on connections. It's behaviors. People can tell when you're authentic and when you are forming, like you said, those meaningful pieces. Yeah, totally. So talk about how you practice connection in the work that you do. Some of it is, again, it's, it's continuous, right? And I have to do this in my work life, but I also have to do it in my home life. I'm a calendar person. <laughs> so some of this stuff, it maybe does have to go on the calendar and it could just be a reminder that I need to write a note to a friend. I actually have a stack of cards here. <laughs> I know that I have to send these notes because that's my little way of sending a message to let them know, hey, I'm thinking of you. And if it means I have to put a reminder on my calendar, then so be it. I have to put a reminder on my calendar. And then along those lines, it's phone calls, it's check-ins. You and I were just talking about an event that you wanted to send a message to somebody and say thank you. And you said, oh, I keep getting caught up. That's one of those moments of yes. connection. When you're thinking about it, just do it, right? Whether it's a LinkedIn message or Instagram or whatever it is, right? Just do it. And those are those little pieces of connection. Okay. I You said something that I'm, now I'm like, Oh boy, this is, I bet, <laughs> the, the deeper thing here, the deeper thing. So I said, so talk about how you practice connection in your daily work. And you said, you know, work could be all the things we do, like could be dishes and picking up kids or whatever, right? But you said the clear distinction between like work life and home life. So mm. what's way harder? Home life, you know, in the work, you can do some check the box even at a kindness level, let's be real, right? Yeah. Like you can be a kind person, but you're not like, you don't have the depth of the depth, right? You like all the things, but home life is like that, like, okay, the, the onion is peeled to the core. Oh yes. 
how is that different from a, say someone is listening right now and they're struggling with a child to connect with. Say somebody is, you know, struggling with a, it's holidays and they're just struggling with like the connection piece. Like what would be that advice in that realm? Those are relationships, whether or not sometimes they're good or bad, whatever. What do you have to say there? I'm just, I actually, I need this advice right now. <laughs> I actually love that you are asking this because I just had this conversation with my boyfriend the other day because it, it goes, it kind of goes back to the animal thing, right? The behaviors at work, you can easily set up time to talk to somebody on the phone. Okay, cool. We connected, but at home, like you said, you can't necessarily get away with it. You can't check a box and everybody has different love languages. So what I think counts as connecting, my boyfriend does not and vice versa. So last night I had some work stuff I had to finish. I was on the computer. He was totally fine with that. He said, just sit next to me. He was watching the football game. I was on the computer. To him, that counted as us spending time together. To me, absolutely not. To me, I'm like, hey, when are we going to hang out this weekend? Like, what is our intentional plan this weekend? I want to go do something. I want to have an experience. And we have these moments of like, not conflict, but we have to really have the conversation of like, yeah, we spent, he said, we spend time all the time together. I'm like, no, we don't. <laughs> That is really key, like the love languages thing. Like oh, really, because you're at this deeper level, it's not like meaning is such a different definition on outside of work a lot of times. Not always. I mean, sometimes you have really deep relationships at work, but usually those deep ones are outside of the work life and how you apply what you shared that you've always learned from like the connection and the meaning and all that with animals does apply. And it's like, how do you then go way deeper? And then understanding what they need at their level. What do I need? What do you need? And then where do we fit in the middle, right? Sometimes it's let's go do activities. Sometimes it's let's sit on a couch. If you're working with a macaw, he just wants his butt scratched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh, I love that. Everyone's different. So good. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So before we transition over to our lightning round, I want to ask you about the Culture Crush Business Podcast and yes. anything else you want to share with us about the greatness you're doing in work because so many of our listeners would be very interested, I know, in what you do. So just elaborate a little bit on Culture Crush Business Podcast. Let us know anything we might want to look for there and just anything that's going on that our leader listener audience would want to know. Yes. And I, I love that you asked this and I appreciate that you asked this because we definitely overlap with a lot of the same areas and a lot of the same wheelhouse. So the podcast itself, the Culture Crush Business Podcast is where it started and it very much is a focus on leaders and other resources that can help improve company culture and listening to these examples, these tips, these tricks, right? All focused around company culture but it, it dives into different areas, but the big umbrella is company culture. And then that has actually branched into the bigger piece, which is the company side. So having these resources in one place. So when folks are listening and they're like, wow, I really need to work on maybe mental health in the workplace. What are some of the resources? We have all of those in one place. So it's growing probably faster than I can keep up with sometimes, which is, I've been told a good problem to have. So it's definitely another option for your listeners too. On your ride to work in the morning, you know, what, what can you listen to? You can listen to this podcast, right? To have those takeaways. And then what's another one? And Culture Crush Business Podcast is another one for sure. Yep. And we'll definitely link that out in the show notes when we'll add that on, you know, things that we're doing for any marketing and promotion and all that. Love to see the success that you're having and can't wait to just continue the partnership. I love this topic. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsor message today, and then we're going to come right back to our lightning round where we'll get to learn a little bit more about the personal side of you. Just cool things that are fun, introspective questions. We'll be right back. If you're leading with a people first mindset, which most likely you are because you're listening to Gut Plus Science, join People Forward Network, the largest community of humans on a shared mission to lead meaningful work. You can find us at peopleforwardnetwork.com or follow People Forward Network on LinkedIn. 
So we are back on Gut Plus Science and Kinder Maples. This topic has been so good today. Loved it. So our lightning round, it just gives us an opportunity, actually, I really appreciate this, to connect <laughs> to, to <laughs> the purpose of it is to like build a relationship and to connect. So the first question that we always ask, we ask the first and the last question always, the middle ones always change. Okay. So the first question is one book that you would recommend that's like your favorite of all time or a recent read for our leader listener audience, one book that you would recommend? I have been on a kick of books and audiobooks and collecting as many as possible, but there's one that I tend to replay and reread and it's the book Unfuck Yourself. (laughs) If people don't have time to actually read the book, if they actually listen to it, the author has the most beautiful, strong, impressive Scottish accent, I think. And I think that's why I've read this book so many times because I'm like, hey, if he said to do it, I'm going to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's really great. Awesome. We'll add that in the show notes. All right. Kendra, what can you do today that you were not really capable of doing a year ago or you hadn't ventured out to doing a year ago? Ooh. I love that question. I am a little bolder with my asks and my no's. I I used to really be that person of not asking for help or not asking for support. I thought that I had to do it all on my own. And now I've passed that point. And I also used to be that person of, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. And then I get burnt out and there doesn't seem to be a point in that. So I've been a lot better about saying no now. That's awesome. All right. What activities or which activities make you lose track of time most? Oh, not business related. I love paddleboarding. And paddleboarding is one of those things I could say, oh, I'm just going to go to the lake for like two hours. And then literally four hours later, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I've missed everything today. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. You got to have those things that take you away, especially when things are like so busy and great and all that, but to get you away, that's cool. Oh, yeah. What always makes you smile? I should say my family, but I'm going to say my dog. (laughs) She is 15 years old and the spiciest thing, man, sometimes I wish she could talk because I could tell from her eyes what's happening and what she thinks. But she, at the end of the day, when anything sucks, she is absolutely the the best little sidekick I could possibly have. Mm, I love that. And what a good dog mom that she's at 15 <laughs> and still, still kicking and thriving. That's awesome. And Kendra, final question. This is an easy one, I'm sure. What, what is the best way for people to connect with you after the episode today? Oh, easy question because I'm linked to all of the podcast stuff and the culture crush business stuff. So people can find me through through those, but I think one of the easiest ways is honestly on LinkedIn. So my name, Kendra with an I, and then maples like the tree. Truth you can act on from my conversation with Kendra Maples. Number one, connecting with others is an intentional effort. It might become a habit over time, but man, that takes a lot of time. We must prioritize our connection efforts intentionally. Lots of examples in this episode to try that out. Supportive actions propel connection. So think about and reflect, what are the supportive actions that I do? Because those I need to do more of to propel connection. Human-centered mindset is what wins when focusing on the connection. The human first. People first. Love that. And finally, reoccurring times to meet, to make deposits and grow the relationship is so key. So as you probably heard on many other things that I've shared, like calendaring things, put them on the calendar. Life is fast and we have to have reminders. And Kendra talked about the importance of reoccurring and just continuing the cadence of developing that relationship. And she talked about a way to do that, throw it on your calendar. I don't know any other way really, but making sure that you're reoccurring efforts are happening to deposit and build those connections. We'll see you next time. We just left the world a little bit better. Now go do something with it.